Welcome to the Bumblecast. I'm your host, Ian Flynn, the Bumble King, and joining me as always is my Bumble co-host, Kyle JCRB Krause. I am here. I have arrived. I mean, I, I, I was here the whole time, but I've still arrived. So I arrived like a few minutes ago, really. So technically I've been here this whole time. And uh, yeah, how are you? I'm doing just fine. You, sir, have a special anniversary to tell everyone about. What? I do. Yes, you actually, do. I do. Yeah. Uh, somehow I've been doing this whole online internet radio podcast type thing for 18 years. And uh, yeah, as of today, actually, on the day we were releasing this, March 15th. So that was the day I did my very first uh Live, live internet broadcast and uh i'm still here 18 years later doing it it's now officially been o- over half of my life that i have done this Holy so mackerel. uh yeah and I'm, I'm i'm still here i don't know why because i like doing it and because it's fun and also because i got nothing else to do <laughs> 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 or something like that. i don't know i just like doing it it's good. It's good. I like to do it. So that is the 18th anniversary of the very first episode of my other show, Nitro Game Injection. So that's uh, it's very exciting. And uh, I was 17 when I started <laughs> that wow. show. So, yeah, it's, it's it's now 18 years later. So if you want to do a little bit of math, you can figure out how old I am. If you have not listened to KNGI yet, what is wrong with you? You have so much content to go through. Head over to KNGI.org right after the show and just fill your ear holes with all all sorts of good music. Yes. I do not recommend going back to number one. In fact, I don't (laughs) recommend going back to, uh, I don't know, maybe anything before episode 112-ish. Because there, there's a few issues with those, with those many early, many early, early, early episodes. Uh, sound quality wise, they do not hold up in the slightest. It's like, uh, it's, it's, it's bad, but you know, it's growing pains. Took a, took a while to, to get better. So what, yeah, but what were you broadcasting on? That was like towards the very (laughs) end of the 56K Odom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we didn't have we didn't have had cable. We didn't have cable for very long, and uh, yeah, it was it was slow cable. I still had a computer with a CRT monitor, and I believe in that first episode and then probably the first couple episodes, my microphone was the one built into the monitor. Oh, which sounds terrible. <laughs> Just sounds awful. <laughs> that's one. No, that's one reason why I do not recommend going back that far. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a research paper on the evolution of broadcasting on the internet, in which case you have a gold mine to dig through. I very well could. Um, one of my earliest bespoke microphones was actually wireless. And keep in mind, this was 2004, where wireless <laughs> technology was not like it is now. So no. it sounds really bad. And I had to keep it on the charger thing the whole time it was wireless but not really mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh yeah dove says kyle sounds like a burger king order box in the chat yes <laughs> yeah. that is correct <laughs> sir this is a one <laughs> uh so yeah that's pretty cool and yeah, that, and we're here we're here doing a bumblecast still. It's like when did we start this? Almost six years ago in October. Yeah. So yeah, we're here doing a bumblecast. I'm doing I'm doing NGI still. Yeah, I, I'm just I'm just weird. So yeah, didn't think I'd still be doing this uh, 18 years ago. Although I never really thought about if I would be doing it or not in 18 years. It just kind of just became my existence, I suppose. Just what I just what I do. So anyway, are we ready to uh, hop into the Q&A? We are. We are. If you want your question answered here on the show, email us at bumblecast at yahoo.com. Tweet to us at bumblecast. Post on any of the YouTube videos. And if you're a patron, post anywhere on the Patreon page. Although we would prefer that you post in the Q&A channel over on the Discord. You can get your question answered sooner rather than later because 
by becoming a $5 patron over at patreon.com backslash bumblecast or sending us two coffees. That's $6 US on Kofi. That's ko fi.com backslash bumblecast. Please be sure to include your name and your question. Otherwise, we're just getting a free donation and loving it. Uh, <laughs> make sure that you check the FAQs over at bumbleking.com, the QA master list on bumbleking.com backslash bumblecast. And that way we won't be treading old ground over and over again although we're still going to manage to do that a little bit on this episode but <laughs> it's also down in the it's also down in the video description if you're watching this on youtube so you can click that little uh q a master list link and go check it out and see all the questions that have been asked so anyway are we ready yep let's do all righty first up our question first question priority question comes to us from ogilvy maurice Hey, is it possible for you guys to say, we want to give a shout out to Ogilvy the Blue, the one and only true Sonic imposter? That would be awesome, man. <clears throat> me, 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 me. Ba, 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 ba. <clears throat> You're listening to the Bumblecast, and we want to give a shout out to Ogilvy the Blue, the one and only true Sonic imposter. That's right. Very, very, very impostery. Because uh, they're Ogilvy. Nine out of ten Amy's can't tell the difference. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's also a terrible name. And that's why they chose it. <laughs> they wanted to troll me, which I don't know if that's... I don't know if they succeeded, really. I mean, it's just funny. <laughs> so, there you go. Have fun with that. Next question is from Digama. Let's take a question I've asked you in the past and reverse it. Would there be any Sonic characters, games, Archie, IDW, etc. that would be like, if they were in Dragoon, they'd be Orkut? Obviously, this whole exercise is for fun, not to be taken the most seriously, but I do find it a neat thought experiment. I, sure. Um, I mean, the Orkut are a matriarchal society. They are, I don't want to say warrior-based, because I don't want to you know, paint any of the races with a broad brush like that but they are they live in some pretty harsh conditions so they are trifle militant so i don't know rosemary prower maybe amy uh -huh. be super cheap and throw in the babylon rogues just because they have feathers <laughs> <laughs> good enough <laughs> sometimes that's all that's all you need got any thoughts on others or uh it's kind of hard to think of it like that it's almost like you know take any sonic character and what species should they be they didn't already have a species attributed it's like what does sonic really gain from being a hedgehog what does sally really gain from being a chipmunk it's nine times out of ten not really important to their character yeah never see sally going around with uh <laughs> never mind <laughs> never mind that was that was gonna be too uh too risque for this show. Yeah, I, so never I mind. The line. Never mind. Never mind. I'm sorry approaching that line. Never mind. I will step back from it. <laughs> <laughs> and we will step into this question from Diane W. Since you're never going to release Last Hedgehog Tales due to outside forces and instead being using for ideas for the IDW book, I may as well ask. As the metal virus was... stop you right there, Kyle. Okay. Because, Diane, there's no need to be insulting. I know that there's frustration about this. It's I share that frustration. But it will come out eventually. I just can't do it yet for reasons that are probably better that I don't get into. So don't just assume that I'm going to do that. Yeah. And I'm not recycling old ideas for the IDW book. That, yeah, the that's, fact that, that's a little weird. Like, yes, and we're going to just jump ahead here because we've already answered this question on the show. Yes, Metal Virus as a concept was originally going to be pitched for the old Archie Sonic stuff, but it never went anywhere. There were no storylines. There were no character arcs. As we said previously, there was nothing the same. Right. Just the core idea. Yeah. So, no, there's nothing that I can feel. There's nothing that you can even ask about. I, I don't think she was intending to be insulting with it for what it's worth, but yeah, it's a little, it's a little harsh. Let's move on to Scruffy Matt. All right, fellas, since you agreed on my last who would win question so easily, let's try another. Bane versus Mr. Freeze. Who wins? Uh, 
I'm gonna have to give it to Bane. Mm, like maybe. Here's the thing: Freeze ought to win because he wouldn't take Bane lightly. He would hit him full force with the freeze gun, and doesn't matter how hardy Bane is. Once his cells start to crystallize, all that muscle is gonna do him no good. He's just gonna shatter. Yeah, that's the. It's like if he gets a shot off first, that's Freeze would probably win that one. But that's the thing is right. Bane isn't just muscle, he's the brains. He wouldn't just bum rush Freeze. He would set up a scenario where he would be able to have the advantage and then just break him like a Kit Kat. Yeah. So Freeze has the ability to win, but Bane, I think, would win just by virtue of prep time. Mm hmm. Yeah. I I think that might be where I agree with you, but uh, if if Freeze can get the shot off first, then he would win. But it's it's a close call. Actually, it's a pretty it's a pretty decent matchup. I don't oh, think yeah. I don't think it, it would be a good. I don't think it scenario. Right. I don't think it would be a short fight, or I don't think it would be a long fight. But uh, it would certainly be an interesting one. <laughs> All right. Our next question here comes from Off. What process do you use for thinking ahead when it comes to writing, when you're taking turns with writing with someone else? With you and Evan both working on your own arcs for the main comic now, do you all have to pass ideas back and forth to make sure neither of you accidentally plot block the other by writing a situation that would interfere with something the other planned on writing? Over at Sonic Legacy, we have several writers working on multiple issues at any given time, so there's always the issue, quote-unquote, of making sure everyone's on the same page. Do you and Evan, and anyone else you've ever written with, ever had to just sit down and be like, okay, this is what I want to do, this is what you want to do, how do we make this work? Yeah, um, with season three, the, you know, Evan was going to be lead writer, I would get to contribute here and there, and there were some plot points that were baked in from bad guys in season two. So that was the jumping on point for everybody. And since Evan was lead writer this season, I opted to follow her lead. So, you know, I didn't do anything until she pitched her initial stuff. And then I looked at where I might be able to contribute uh, the stories that I wanted to tell, where would they fit best within her framework. And then we went back and forth saying, okay, what can, you know, can I do this here? Can you do that there? what would be best for this? What are you thinking with this direction for your story? So that, like you said, you don't plot block them <laughs> and it's a very easy and straightforward process because she's very talented and we've worked together in the past and there's mutual respect there. And then of course that went to the editors that went to Sega. There were revisions from there, but there's a, yeah, we plotted out the next year's worth of books to make sure that we had that arc figured out so that we knew where everything was going, where folks were going to be. And as things, you know, adjust as issues are done and new story ideas come up or little nuances, I'll ping her, she'll ping me and say, hey, I had an idea for this. Does that work for you? And, you know, work it from there. Uh, with the other books, I so rarely get to work directly with other people. Like the My Little Pony Transformers stuff is we're pitching, or at least from my end, pitching individual stories that fit within a greater framework and the editors are figuring out how to fit it together itself. I've not worked directly with the other writers on that, but that's kind of more a composite of stories. Uh, kind of like the annuals, you know, I didn't really talk with anyone on Sonic annual 2019 or 2020, but you didn't really need to because it wasn't fitting into an overarching plot. And it's the editor's job to make sure that everything fits ultimately. Yeah. With older Archie stuff, uh, the rare time Evan or Aaliyah or Tracy got to pitch a story, they usually came to me first and said, hey, this is what I had in mind. Is that cool with you? And I'm like, yeah, that's freaking cool. Go with it. And I'll follow <laughs> your lead. Yeah. What about the, uh, I know you've done some Archie collaboration. Oh, yeah, work. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, in those instances, I was usually given uh, the writer's springboard for the story. And then I showed them the breakdowns to see, you know, if it jived with them. I I usually did the first pass of the script and then gave it to them to tinker with as they saw fit. Huh. Cool. It's 
kind of directly collaborative, but also kind of hands off. It's it's weird. Yeah, but I kind of like. It. Yeah, just kind of kind of do do your thing, and then that's it. <laughs> and then you figure out how that fits together later. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. What about uh, like DC and IDW work? I know you just mentioned the My Little Pony stuff, but like TMNT and. Those were all solo efforts. They were. Much. Oh, okay. I was, I was, you know, working under guidance of the director for not the director, the editor. Yeah. Well, for you know, same thing. <laughs> the greater idea of the book or the project, but no, never really collaborated with other writers on those. Ah. All righty. Next question here comes from Idaria. Hi, Ian and Kyle. Following Levi Yugi's question from last Bumblecast Q and A regarding the existence of French versions of IDW Sonic, which indeed do exist. If I'm not mistaken, we have four volumes covering issue 1 to 16, and then it kind of stopped for some reason. It may be curious. Do you, Ian, as a comic writer, whether it be Sonic IDW, Sonic Archie, or Dragoon, get to take part when it comes to translating a comic from English to another language? I don't mean the translation itself, but do you get to meet those who will be translating in their languages? Or do you have to send the script to them? Or is it all taken care of by the publisher and or letter or someone else entirely? I'm curious to know how this whole process works, if you have an answer. I am curious, too, because I am completely out of the loop. <laughs> <laughs> well, like when it gets announced, hey, it's coming out in this language. It's like neat. Cool. <laughs> and that that is my contribution. My contribution is retweeting it if I happen to see it. Um <laughs> I have no idea if they're given, you know, the original scripts I send in, if they're given just the comic and they translate from that. Uh, I don't know who answers localization questions. I have no idea. Like, I would love to help out in any way that I could, but uh, I am out of loop. I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. Well, either way, more people being able to read it is always a good thing. So next question here is from Andrew D. Where can I read all of Drogoon so far in its intended reading order? What is the reading order? I know at this point there was a spinoff for the manga contest. Is there anything else? And is the reading order also the chronological order? Basically, I'm looking to finally read Drogoon, and I don't know where to start. It is super simple. Head over to Drogoon.com. That's D-R-O-G-U-N-E.com. And click the first page tab and go from there. It is not it isn't big enough to be confusing just yet it is presented <laughs> as you need to read it if you don't want to read it on drogun.com there's a link to the webtoon page that has the exact same content you can read it in that order too you can subscribe for free so you know when the new pages come out but otherwise it's the exact same thing between the two pages except for a two-page spread that would not work with webtoons format so you have to read it on drogun.com but that's besides the point uh outcast is a fun little spinoff that happens before the main story but it is not essential reading at all at this point you can skip it entirely if you want to and the lore pages are fun extra material extra insight in the universe but they're also not required reading so all you have to do is read page one through 61 and you're good um does Outcast will that factor in in the future at all, or is that like just a one off? That's it. And you're, are you planning on any more of that, or adding more? Or oh, I have this long con planned for years and years and years and years. Okay, <laughs> and connections will be made, but that's so far down the line at this point. It's not worth mentioning, really. Yep. Okay. You no, know, it. For right now, it's super easy to jump in. Just start at page one and go for it. Yep. And when things get more complicated down the line, I'll make sure to make it clear what goes where and when. But we won't have to worry about that for a long All righty. Excellent. Our next question is from Scurvy Pirate Hog. This time we're, uh, we're, we're getting into another fight. We're getting into another versus question. Who would, win in... Fun. <laughs> Who would win in a fight between Espio the Chameleon and the Shredder. Depends on which Shredder we're talking about. <laughs> it kind of depends on the Espio we're talking about. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, see, on the one hand, I'm inclined to say Shredder. Mm -hmm. Because most incarnations are 
universally more competent and lethal than any incarnation of Espio. Right. However, Shredder has a long and storied history of being beaten up by teenage rep- reptiles. <laughs> yeah, and that's Espio. <laughs> that no ninjutsu, no less. So... <laughs> <laughs> is it an intrinsic weakness to Shredder? Does Espio just have a bonus <laughs> because of who and what he is? I don't know. I think that is... That's a tough one. <laughs> that one's yeah. harder than Bane and Mr. Freeze. Yeah. The, mm. uh, um, the 2012 Shredder is like freaking... Like, I, <laughs> it really seems like they made the Turtles lose a lot. In that yeah, show, twenty twelve Shredder is terrifying. Absolutely, yes, he is. A I don't think he ever monster. loses a fight. No, I don't believe so. He he, like Leatherhead almost bites him in half, and he still wins. Yeah, he's a he's a like a monster, and that's before he actually turns into a actual monster. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So he he, if it were him, oh man, but if it were Uncle Phil Shredder. <laughs> <laughs> then it <laughs> might be might be a little more lopsided in favor of Espio on that one. Uh so we have to decide we have to decide which shredder <laughs> would win on that Honestly, one. Man. I'm not sure. Comment in the video below. Tell us what you think. Who's gonna win this fight? See if the chat can decide for us. Yeah, because if we're talking like okay, super shredder from Turtles of Time, he might lose. Super Shredder from a Turtles movie, SBO would win because that one just got like friggin' dumped on by a dock. And he, he like, lost to a piece of he lo- <laughs> lawn. Yeah, he lost to he he lost to a uh, <laughs> to a boat dock. <laughs> uh 2003 shredder i actually i need to watch more of the 2003 shredder but um yeah i don't know it's it's really tough to say it's it's just it's 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 a tough fight yeah you know what to do down in the comments let us know let us know next question comes from noni is there any tailoring commission that honey the cat wouldn't take anything that wouldn't make her client look fabulous Mm-hmm. You know, maybe they have a precise vision of what they want to commission, and it's just awful. And she's not going to do that. She's not going to ruin her own name by producing something of low quality, and she's not going to make you look bad by putting you in something that looks ugly. She will work with you to make a fabulous outfit. She absolutely will. And she's got the skill and the talent to do it. And if you force the issue, she'll beat you up. So, you know, in the end, you're going to look <laughs> great. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I, that's why I love honey. She's great. And our last priority question this week comes from Papa Dreepopolis. So Ian, it seems you've altered the BKC site to finally mention the Dark Horse Arms comic as a canceled project. Did something change? You got some confirmation the project's dead? Something like that? Does this mean you can talk some more about the project, or are you still just overall NDA'd into tomb like silence? If you can, feel free to take this as the cue to ramble about it as long as you feel comfortable about. On the one hand, I'm kind of glad people are actually looking at my website because I feel like it doesn't get any attention. <laughs> but uh, which is not surprising because it doesn't update all that often. But uh, yeah, and websites are kind of <sighs> old school these days. I I feel like they should be mostly in the clear, but I'm not a hundred percent certain. So I got more definitive information on my end. I felt that was at least pertinent enough to update the web page. And I'm going to just have to let that be the final word on it. Um, there's certainly more that I would like to say on it. There's a nice juicy, angry rant to be had at somebody's expense. I'm sure, but mm. that's not going to help anyone. And if anything might potentially close doors. So I'm just going to say it is what it is. And we're going to leave it at that. Kind of unfortunate that it wasn't, officially announced from dark horse or anything that i saw again that might be just a matter of them not wanting to close doors mm-hmm. hence why i don't want to throw a wrench into anything yeah well Deal. that's a shame i was looking forward to that too definitely yeah it would have been fun yeah but the free comic book day issue is still out there free to download if you want to get you know a little taste of what might have been 
I'm wondering if it was um, just because of the fact that the game wasn't super duper successful. Like it definitely didn't blow up mm. quite like Splatoon did. So no, not but, that. Not that. Not okay. That. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, since we're at the end of the priority Q and A, let's go ahead and take a quick break, and we'll be right back with more questions and answers on the Bubblecast. And we're back. Let's jump on over into the standard Q&A. Here's this one from K. McConnell K. Hi, Ian. My question is about something said in issue 9 of the IDW comics. On the way to Angel Island, Rouge speaks to Shadow about the fact that he's not usually one for team-ups, and Shadow responds, I'm here for my own reasons. And I was just wondering, what were Shadow's reasons for going? Was it just so he could fight Neo Metal Sonic, or is it something else that might get revealed later? Or am I looking too much into a simple line? Either way, keep up the amazing work, and I really look forward to what you and Evan have planned for the future. Yeah, that was a kind of last-minute line edit to appease Sega, because that was where I was starting to learn what they wanted from Shadow. Uh, hmm. I, I guess ultimately what he wanted was to fight a strong opponent, but he's not really one to express his opinions or share his thoughts, so he won't come right out and say that. <laughs> okay. Uh, shadow. I shake my head. A shadow of his former self. Practically, yes. Jack H. is here with a question. What was the deal with making Ramoon the creator of the Star Droids? It seemed a little weird given how Ramoon, while whatever, while related to whatever alien species made it and the Star Droids, seemed more related to them in their origins rather than Ramoon being the progenitor of them all. Also, if you have the time, favorite Mega Man Robot Master, it can also include spinoffs like Mega Man and Base. Um, that was me trying to simplify and tie together various elements of the classic lore together in a way that I thought made sense. Um, the fact that Raw Moon creates a lot of robots in his game, and that the, if I remember correctly, the Star Droids base was very reminiscent of raw moon and its design that I don't know to me, it felt it's been a long time since I did this research, but I feel like there were enough dots. I felt you could connect them that it would at least make a little bit of sense. And Capcom seemed to be cool with that. So, you know, run with it. Yeah. It also kind of gave the star droids more impetus to come to earth instead of, hi, we're here now. That's, you know, (laughs) raw moon was here and that, prompted them to come to earth mm, delicious Ra- uh, as for favorite... moon. anyway go ahead. <laughs> anyway sorry as for favorite robot master oh man there are so many to choose from but there's some good ones <sighs> my knee-jerk reaction is to say guts man oh, a classic he's a classic man he's a classic now just something about that strong masculine jawline <laughs> something that can really <laughs> shovel gravel does Quake Woman count? I mean, if we're talking canonical to the games, then probably not. But uh, she would be my favorite if so. Otherwise, uh, I don't know. Splash Woman? Splash Woman's pretty cool. She's a, she's unique. Or, uh, hmm. I do like Iceman's Punnage. That's, that's always a fun time. Otherwise, uh, I don't know. There's a lot of them. <laughs> There are too many. There is. Um, I feel like if I just cracked open the Robot Master field guide yeah. and went through it page by page, you'd be like, oh, yeah, that one's good. That one's good. I like that one. I like that one, too. Yeah. Uh, Airman's pretty cool. Hard Man has a funny name. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see. What else? Junk Man is <laughs> really <laughs> stupid. So stupid that it becomes rolls back around to being good. Maybe, kind of. Sheep Man is <laughs> another one. dumb one. I get that. I get the reference because it's you know, do do androids dream of electric sheep? I know it's a it's a reference to that. I am I'm aware, but still pretty silly. <laughs> oh well. Next up is from Yadiel N. Ian, will Metal Sonic 3.0 ever appear in the IDW series? And since I miss Shard, will we ever see this man become him, please? 
Uh, unlikely to the former, absolutely not to the latter. I, I can tell you that with certainty. Sega's never going to allow us to do that. Dang. Next question comes from Andrew P. I was wondering, what would a piece of media, show, game, movie, etc., that feels very similar to Sonic, either with character dynamics, story beats, or visuals? In my opinions, the 2012 canceled Disney XD show Motor City, a heavily stylized animated show about a bunch of car-driving youths led by a cocky guy and his cowardly but endearing engineer friend fighting a bald man played by Mark Hamill, is one of my picks. Another would be the Mission Impossible series, specifically those made after the second one with Tom Cruise as a fast-paced improviser, Simon Begg as this dorky techie buddy, and Ving Rhames as a stern but friendly strongman. Your answer doesn't have to be applying Sonic to pre-existing IP. could be IPs with a tonal aesthetic and storytelling similarities as well. I just wanted to give out some similarities to two things I haven't heard anybody else talk about. Uh, I think it depends on which incarnation of Sonic you're talking about. Sure. Uh, I remember when Motor, when Motor City first came out and folks were saying, this feels like the spiritual successor to Sad AM. And I checked it out, and yeah, I can see exactly what they were talking about. It was a fun show. I wish it went on longer. Um, it's obviously not one-to-one, but that kind of feeling of here are the rebellious, brightly colored youths striking out from their hidden base to fight the monolithic empire. Yeah, that's that's straight up it. That was fun. Yeah. Man, I forgot about Motor City. I miss Motor City. I'd never even heard of it until this question. <laughs> but uh, it sounds like it, I, I, car, car, fast cars driving fast. That sounds like my sort of thing, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Everybody's got like these big old muscle cars that they drive around and fight robots with. Uh, uh, okay. Yes, I'm sold. <laughs> yeah, dude. You, you would freaking love Motor City. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, please. I don't know if it's on Disney Plus or not. No, well, uh, there are methods. If it's yeah, not. yeah, it's worth it's worth finding some way or another. Okay, but yeah, Motor City that that's a lot of fun. Um, if we I don't know if you might even say Star Wars is kind of honestly, similar. yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking. It's the thing is, is that Sonic is not like new in its in its trope usage. Like, mm-hmm. it's pretty straightforward. It's it uses long established storytelling things to build it. And that's fine. That's totally fine. It's just like, it. it's almost like there's everything, every other franchise in the world could almost be boiled down to being Sonic like. So, yeah, but I feel the presentation is where you, it's the, at the heart of Andrew's question. Kind of like how, right. True. I'd say, Late game pre reboot Sonic and a little bit of post reboot Archie Sonic are very much 90s X Men. That's true, yeah. Especially pre reboot because you've got your brightly colored, super powered characters flying around on their badass high tech ship fighting these wacky over the top villain type things. It's that that is, I, I can almost hear the 90s X Men cartoon theme in my head and syncing it up with the comic you know right yeah that is uh that is definitely true um hmm. i'd say that there are the fact that the mega man and sonic crossover worked so well is because there are a lot of similarities too Mm -hmm. so it it's not quite one-to-one but like tonally and as far as presentation goes there's definitely a a connection to be made there. And that's why those two series mesh so well. Also because, you know, you're, you, you were writing it and you know what, you know what you're doing. <laughs> so <laughs> that helps, but still they're, they're, they're kind of like they've, they've mesh very well together, even though they're not exactly the same. So lots of, uh, bright colors and, you know, funky robot designs and two fun villains who are, uh, very evil and uh, are <laughs> super fun together. And yeah, it's Mega Man is definitely something where I'm like, yeah, that, that there seems to be a lot of crossover between fans of Sonic and fans of Mega Man too, even before any sort of crossover 
happened. So it was a. I feel like they're kind of in the same vein as each other, you know? Yeah. I'd say maybe even uh, original Dragon Ball, hmm. especially closer to maybe classic Sonic and just that you have these light heart, uh, typically light hearted adventures. Sure. You know, traveling to new locations, you know, each time you come somewhere new, there's some new threat or there's some new evil that has to be thwarted. But it's, I don't say completely disconnected because there is a through one, but yeah. You know, something that's more about the individual adventure and less of continuity, you know? Right. And considering the uh, similarities of the the inspiration, let's say, of some elements of Sonic compared to Dragon Ball, (laughs) that, uh, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, those are kind of the main ones I can think of. But, yeah, I think that's it. Here's this question here from Nora V. Hope you had a happy holiday during this hell of a year. Uh, Yeah, it's been a while. Sorry for uh, taking a while to get to your question, Nora. But this question is directed towards Ian. My question is, do the hooligans, team hooligans, consisting of Fang the Sniper, Knack slash Knack the Weasel, Bean the Dynamite, Duck, and Bark the Polar Bear, exist in the world of Sonic or at least in IDW? Because I remember in Sonic IDW issue 3, part 3 of the Fallout segment, Sonic looks at Rough and Tumble and tells Knuckles, wow, these guys make the hooligans look like class acts. When this was said, was Sonic referring to Team Hooligans in general, or Team Hooligans, or just general hooligans like clowns, because the font without caps makes it unclear. And either way, would you ever plan to introduce them to the plot in any way? Because it would be fun to see them tangle with the bad guys, especially Rough and Tumble, or the Babylon Rogues. How would they act... And would they be like how they are in the Champions arc of the Art Sonic Archie comics, post reboot or different? If different, then how would they be? I guess this is one so, way of m- getting one question into multiple questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the line of Sonic referencing the hooligans in number three was me really pushing the envelope and seeing what I could get away with, see if I could use this as a backdoor to get things approved. And later on, when we did try to pitch the hooligans in IDW, it was like, no, they're classic here. And we said, but we said the line here. And they're like, yep, we missed that. Don't do it again. It's like, dang it. Oh. Uh, and from my understanding, hooligans is even as a collective term is even off the table now, unfortunately. So uh, Fang and being embark- Fang, Fan and being Embark being together isn't necessarily off the table. Thank you, Sonic Mania. But they are classic characters, so we're not going to be seeing them in the IDW book anytime soon. As for characterization, that is all up to Sega. You know, what I came up with before was because there was nothing to work with. They just weren't in the games anymore. And now there's a bit more attention to them. So when we, when, if and when we get the opportunity to see them, it will be interesting to see what I can do. Alrighty. Here's this question from Aaron M. I've always wanted to make my own Sonic comic fan series like Sonic Rebound, and I was wondering if I could get your consent to base it on the IDW comics comics, and use characters like Tangle and Whisper within my series. Also, could I reintroduce Lupe the Wolf in the series? Aaron, I cannot give you my consent because it is not mine to give. I have no legal control over any of this stuff, so I can't legally like this is not a verbal contract but speaking as a creator who enjoys the boundless imagination of the fandom you do you man if you want to do a comic with those characters do it if you want to do it with different characters do that if you want to mix it and match it and add your own ocs or whatever it's your project man it's your fan project go nuts the only thing stopping you is you and if you try to make money off it, probably a cease and desist. But, you know, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. like, kind of blanket statement here, you know, if folks want to have fun with the characters that I've been involved with, whether I own them or not, I say go for it. Create. Enjoy. Experience. Do. This is not a, this is a non-legal binding <laughs> agreement because I can't <laughs> do that. But... You, know, you don't have to ask me for permission because, number one, I can't grant it. And number two, who cares? Yeah. It's a fan project. Yep. Have fun. 
What about uh, what about Drogoon? Could they, could they get your consent on that? <laughs> yeah, actually, I talked uh, with Adam about this. If you want to do Drogoon stuff, go for it. Like, like if you want to do uh, commission stuff or whatever, go nuts. You know, we we would like that there be some kind of like watermark or something pointing back to us, but you know, we're not going to be hounding people at conventions saying aha i see you have a print with wind on it that will be five thousand dollars right now or <laughs> wah, wah, wah. No, just, uh, we we grew up in the convention circuit we know this business it's it's fine and if anything it's free exposure now if you're looking at producing like upwards of 100 units or something like buttons or plushes or whatever then you know let's talk about licensing or something but if you're running like a Patreon or something and somebody asks you to commission Lissy or something, yeah, go for it with our blessing. Have fun. Do it well. You know, say, check us out later. But uh, I think the only other thing is just, you know, don't do anything weird or gross with the underage characters. That's no. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I know the Internet. I know there are folks who would want that. So I'm just putting that out there. Please don't. Um, not like I can really police the Internet, but. I think a little bit of good faith goes a long way. Sure. Next question is from Aussie Mate. Good eye. Good eye. Can you explain why you are so firm when it comes to Last Hedgehog Tail stuff? I understand that with IDW, there's a chance that something can see the light of day, as well as the fact is that this won't pay the bills. It's just been almost a decade, and this really feeling like a Winds of Winter or Half Life 3 scenario. It'd be nice if there were a Lost Tail special since I know this can easily become a if you give a mouse a cookie sort of thing. I just don't understand why there can't be some sort of middle ground. And I get that. I really do. And I wish it was simpler. It really ought to be far simpler than it is. But there's just one particular factor that I am very concerned about. Um, One particular factor that has proven to be extremely volatile over the years, even over the smallest thing. And I don't want any goodwill on my end to be twisted and used by that factor to undermine something that could be bigger and better for everyone else. Um, Once, if things fall into place where I think they will, hopefully sooner rather than later, then I should be in the clear because Things will be where I want them to be, and I my can meet my contribution to something online. It shouldn't affect it. You now, what's done will be done, and I'll be in the clear. But there's this, just that one factor that I know could potentially ruin everything, and the only thing that would set it off, again, potentially, would be me going ahead of everything else, and it's not worth it. At least in my mind. So that's a lot of vague speak. (laughs) (laughs) Because, again, I don't want to bait certain factors into factoring, certainly. (laughs) Uh, It's... I I, I hope the level of frustration on my end is coming through the mic. (laughs) Because this was supposed to be a simple, fun bit of closure for everybody. And, And it's not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the, when you put it like you know it's been 10 years winds of winter half-life 3 it's like oh no i'm becoming one of those but <laughs> it it will happen i promise either things will fall into place or i will be so old and bitter i don't care anymore and we'll let the world burn down around me we'll <laughs> we'll see what happens first uh I have I have my theory and suspicions about what this uh, factor could be, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll leave those for for later. <laughs> Next question is from P. L. Martin. Ian, I've noticed there seems to be a lot of Christmas and Halloween themes for the Sonic characters pushed by Sega, from alternate outfits to various promotional materials such as artwork. I was curious if you knew whether or not. Earth holidays such as Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Halloween, Chinese New Year, etc. are celebrated on Sonic and Blaze's world? And if they aren't, then what is the Sonic and Blaze's world versions of holidays seen on Earth that have been promoted so much by Sega, such as Halloween and Christmas? Um, I don't think there is 
one-to-one parallels within the sonic lore but equivalents thereof the reason why you see all the christmas and halloween stuff is that those two holidays have been monetized mercilessly yeah (laughs) yes Uh, halloween is largely harmless there are the pagans that would still try to claim it as their own but unfortunately nobody listens to them and there are you know the two very different christmases the one that is the actual celebration of christ and the one that everyone else does (laughs) so uh and that that is clearly the one that is being marketed so much Uh, i wouldn't think too hard about it i just think it's more of a general you know here's a fun alternate outfit and if you're into that holiday then cool you get something to enjoy and if not well you can ignore it because it's just a costume yeah that's they also have a question for you kyle oh boy Kyle, are you guys bilingual or do you only speak English? Curious because I'm sure some of the viewers have wondered. Uh, well, if you've been listening to the show for uh, for a long time, you are well aware that uh, I can barely even speak English, much less <laughs> anything else. So, no, I am not bilingual, sadly. I have I did uh, a semester of German in high school. And I had some very, very basic remedial Spanish as in elementary school for several years. And it's all gone. (laughs) It's all gone. (laughs) So, yeah, it's been 18 years since the German, at least. So, yeah, it's gone. Mm. Very, very little of that remains. So, unfortunately, I am not bilingual in the slightest. Bumblecast off Deutsch? Nine. No. Nine. Nine. What about you, Ian? Uh, no. I am <laughs> stunningly inept at other languages. I have dabbled in Spanish, German, Latin, Japanese. French is especially dense to me, and I can get just enough of some of them to say a sentence or understand the principle of the language, but I have no command over them at all. Right. Like, the best Spanish I ever did was uh, some elderly gentleman was trying to get an ATM to work, and he spoke three words of English. I spoke just enough Spanish to understand what he wanted, but I couldn't convey any useful information and unfortunately just frustrated the poor man. So, sir, if you happen to be listening to this for whatever reason, lo siento, (laughs) 20-something years later... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that would be uh that would be pretty uh, pretty wild if they were <laughs> i mean stranger things have happened but yeah no it's no 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 i am it's frustrating to me because i really want to learn i feel like that would be one of the most valued skills ever when people talk about oh the lame x-men what about cypher all he can do is learn any language it's like i would kill to yeah. have that power dude. yeah that's fantastic to be able to speak to anyone, anywhere, anytime, any way, to be able to read and comprehend anything. Oh, that is, that would be the dream. Forget Superman. Yeah. Give me Cypher's powers right now. <laughs> yeah. What demon do I have to conjure? And what do I have to sacrifice to his unholy maw to get that power? Oh, wait, I need to know Latin. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's only, there's only one person related to this show and she's not here. She, but she does have some understanding of a second language, so that's it. Though we're not, neither of us are. We're all dirty, smelly Americans who have no concept of being able to speak our own language, much less anybody else's. <laughs> our grasp of the English language is more like a wave goodbye. Yes, yes. Um, I will say that if you have learned English as a second language, you almost certainly speak it and write it and everything better than we do. <laughs> <laughs> I have, uh, I had a friend, a friend of mine uh, who's from Norway, yeah, um, who was always very, uh, well, for a while he was very uh, afraid to speak English in front of Americans and any native English speakers because he was always afraid it would sound wrong or whatever and it's like no dude you speak and write better English than any any American (laughs) you you have Mm -hmm. you have you have grasped this language so much better (laughs) 
<laughs> than we have. So, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. <laughs> Next up, question from Miles T. Prower. For Ian, have you ever cried or got emotional while writing a scene? I would be very surprised if you weren't, but if so, which one? Grammar was a little weird on that one. <laughs> anyway, yeah, but we got it. Well, maybe they're English, maybe they're English second language. Who knows? Maybe, maybe. Um, there's been a few, and in those instances, I feel like if I'm getting worked up over it, then surely the readers are going to be devastated by it. That's good. That's what I'm going for. Uh, the latest example would be when Tangle pulls the sacrifice play during Metal Virus. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a scene I had so vivid in my head when I pitched the thing early. And when I finally got to it, it's like, okay, I can't overthink this. I have to do it right. And even knowing what was coming like a year in advance, I'm like, oh, this kind of hurts. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, it's rough. I know there are others, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. Hmm. I do know that, you know, they worked, though, because you know, <laughs> once the issue came out, my tweets were just flooded with people going, how dare you? There was a lot of Sally ones I know that people were upset about. Oh, I think it was the one with um, when Cream gets infected and Gimbal mm -hmm. says that he'll stay with her until the end. And I think it was Matt Herm's colorist extraordinaire for the series who tweeted at me going, you know, I just had a kid. How dare you, sir? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, there's the whole mighty and matilda thing yeah 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 but uh kind of related their question for you kyle have you ever cried or got emotional while reading a story from ian if so which one cried no but definitely felt the uh pangs of sadness yeah definitely we've mentioned most of them <laughs> already the uh the tangle one really hurts like, man, that's just brutal. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, just the Metal Virus Saga as a whole, just seeing everybody kind of getting, uh, getting turned was, yeah. That was, that was rough, man. Why are you so mean to these characters? They, what did they do to you? What did they do? They're just, they're, they're just a cartoon animal characters living their own fun lives, and then here comes Big Bad Ian Flynn. With his freaking metal Terminator goo spilling it all over everybody and turning everybody mean. It's like, how could you do this? How? 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 Uh, there's another, pretty much anything <laughs> involving blues in Mega Man. Yes. Yeah. Like, yep. Yep. That two part story when he finally realizes he was wrong and he goes back to Light Labs to seek forgiveness and his place in the family he looks in the skylight and whoops there's new kids and you don't even need to dwell on it he just looks and then he's gone and you know everything about that moment mm -hmm. god chad thomas nailed that one and yeah. when, uh he's confronting tempo yep yep i was gonna say we got emotional the, the emotion during that was like whoa <laughs> it's like, he replaced me just ooh, chills uh, i believe that was ben bates yeah i think so or was it Tyson? No, Tyson has. Excuse me. Sorry, Tyson. Oh, okay. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it was such a good moment, though. Just, ah. Uh. Because, you know, Tyson is freaking amazing. Just, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. And if you can find it, um, the Michelangelo one shot I did for IDW, the whole thing revolves around this kind of long simmering resentment between Michelangelo and Splinter. And that whole thing is just like one giant cathartic release. And uh, I can't remember the artist for that one. Shoot. But the art is just absolutely splendid through the, oh man, I got spoiled on that one. So, so pretty a book. <laughs> and just, oh, I got to write Mikey as something other than, you know, just the goofball to show what being the heart of the team means and have Splinter confront some of his bad decisions. And, oh man, that, that was a good one. That mm -hmm. came together very nicely. Nice. That, uh, that actually makes me think TMNT has a lot of Sonic-like qualities to it. Or, you know, you could cross them over and kind of get a... They would have a good vibe together. So, 
I, I don't know. That's just oh, related that's, to an uh, earlier question. I'm like, yeah, okay. Turtles, yeah, it would work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Another moment that uh, got people pretty hard was when Vector closes the door. Mm-hmm. Espio, you're lead detective now. Clang. Ah, oh, that came together. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, people were upset by that for sure. I make them feel alive. <laughs> How dare you? And our final question is from Sega Nintendo. They finally come together. <laughs> and this is their question. Can you bring Tangle back in IDW Sonic comic? She never left. Maybe. You don't know that for sure. I do because she shows she, up in Evan's latest story. She died for a while. Except no, not died. No. She just became metal. Everybody came down with a bad case of the metals. She became very metal. It's like they were, they were headbanging everywhere. They couldn't stop. <laughs> They were holding up the holding up the horns and th- throwing their hair around all the time. It just wouldn't end. Never ended. You had to call in Jack Black's character from uh, Brutal Legend. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's it. We're done. Not quite yet. We need to give a big thank you to everyone who makes this show possible. Big thank you to Dan. <sighs> Daniel H, Alex P, James K, John B, Jennifer R, Samuel P, Sam Cybercat, Robotnik Holmes, Mike B, Justin G, Torchbound, Coupling Crew 128, Do His Diz Din, Diane W, Scruffy Matt, Andrew D, Chris A, John M, Don B, Yami M, Lee H, K, Sin Fritz, Lisa M, Sonny, Chevelle, Silly String, Takaro, Salute Your Cat, Dave M, Noni, Off, Justin S, Blue Title Gamer, Bradley TT, Tick Tick, Papadrepidopolis, Final Neil, Degama F, Wow, Jonathan L, J Frost, Jonathan D, PC the Unicorn, Rachel W, Godzilla, Chaos Universe, Sonic Legacy, Piggy Bank, Daniel B, Preston M, Pan Dulce, Dadler the Dalek, Ogilvy Maurice, Jib, Owen B D, Dove, Glitchiest, Sapphire Scarletta, Turbo, Jonathan W, Red Wolf, Red the Supernamic, Chaz L, Crooker, Hero of Light 13, Afro Luffy X, Idira, and Scurvy Pirate Hog. <laughs> I like how you have created your own pronunciation of Papadripopolis. Yes. <laughs> As we've established. English is hard. Yeah, yeah. I had to look it up and practice it for a little while. He just goes by Paps in the Discord, so, you know, makes things a little easier. That's going to do it for this edition of the Bumblecast, except for all the little things we got to mention at the end, which uh, I'll let you start that off, Ian. Go for it. Go. Where can the people find you? Find me on Twitter at Ian Flynn BKC. Find my personal website, BumbleKing.com, with the release schedule of work I've got coming out, along with the Bumble Comic Shop, where you can buy signed books by me and my original series with artist superstar Adam Bryce Thomas over at Drogoon.com. That's D-R-O-G-U-N-E.com. Kyle, what about you? You can find me over on Twitter at KyleJCRB, and you can find 18 years of a running legacy over at KNGI.org. That's where you can find my other show, Nitro Game Injection. You can listen to that one streaming live on Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time over there, or you can uh, check out the archives and uh, listen to a previous episode. Don't worry, there's no overarching storyline or anything. You can just hop right into any episode and enjoy some excellent video game arrangements, remixes, covers, all that good stuff, usually the of the fan-made variety and uh, all sorts of other good, good music. So be sure to uh, check that out if you get the chance. Uh, I mean, I'd appreciate it. I'd appreciate it if you take a listen, you know, might be nice. Let me know what you think. 18 years of legacy. That's a good tagline. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It might be better when I get to 20, <laughs> which will happen, by the way. It's almost, oh, yeah. almost guaranteed just because I am like, I don't know. I just don't. I just will never stop, I guess. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Go ahead. Follow the show on Twitter at Bumblecast. Contact us at Bumblecast at Yahoo.com and listen to us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube Music, Spotify, Amazon Music, Audible, our YouTube channel, and KNGI.org. You can also check out the Bumble Store. That's over at shop.spreadshirt.com slash Bumble Store. That's where you can get some Bumble goodies like uh, a Knowing Smile shirt or a Knowing Smile mask or a Knowing Smile hat, maybe. I don't know. Do they have hats on there? They might. You can get a Knowing, smile, sure you can get a knowing smile mug or some other drink receptacle or something. I don't know what they got over there. You should find out over at shop.spreadshirt.com slash Bumble Store. It's, it's all there. 
It's all over there. And catch Bumblecast Gaming live streaming on Twitch. That's twitch.tv backslash Bumblecast Gaming Sundays at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Nice. Yes, check us out over there. And uh, we'll, we'll ha- we have some fun. Have some fun. So, Anyway, that's going to do it for this edition of the Bumblecast. Any last words, Ian? Not a one, because we're done. Good. Good. That's good. Because I don't have any words either. I've had enough. Enough words to last a lifetime. I was waiting for you to just keep going so I could you know, say, Shut up already! But then you made me laugh and that threw out all my... Glad I could help you. Jokes. I've been recording this whole time and none of this is really good fodder for the end. Absolutely not. Ah, <sighs> dang. <laughs> screwed up. <laughs> screwed up. It's supposed to be funny. We're not funny at all. A, you want to start a new recording so you don't have to you know, jump 13 minutes of copy? Nope. Okay. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I l- prefer right. it all in one because then I can, like, I can move stuff around and do what I need to do with it when it's all in one file. When it's in multiple files and then I just have to deal with multiple files and that makes it even more annoying. You're the boss. Okay. That's right. Even though it's your show with your name on it, <laughs> literally your Bumble Bumble product, it's yours. But okay, <laughs> Dave M, <laughs> you've been doxxed. You've been listening to the Bumblecast, a co-production of Bumble King Comics and the KNGI Network. Original theme music composed by Ken Coda Snyder. Remixed intro by T Lopes. Find out more information, along with podcast feeder links, MP3 downloads, and more at bumbleking.com and kngi.org. What does KKM even mean, Paps? <laughs> the M is your name. Okay. The KK is what? Like KK Slider? It's not like LL Cool J? Which is just ladies love cool James. <laughs> it's still hilarious to me that that's what that name means. <laughs> yeah.